why is it like this? Okay, so now Jim Baker, uh, there were some things that happened to Jim Baker that were very interesting. Mm -hmm. No, because it, that's a chapter by itself. Well, this is the place to... No, because it doesn't work. See, trying to synopsize my relationship with Jim Baker, who was later called Father Yad, if there was something like this. Uh, in the early 50s, he was like a father to me. I lived with him. I learned things that I just put forward to him about values. Uh, he had an incredibly strong life. He, soldier, he killed people as a soldier in the Philippines, he felt bad about it because of the ways to keep his life, um, he went back to the Philippines in 1965, and by that time he had long hair like everyone else, he was, uh, he believed that uh, Food, the adulteration of food was on sanity that was good. Reality. He was in, uh, he went back to the same island where he felt so bad about killing hands of Japanese Marines that they were sleeping. And he found this island, not the peace that he thought was now be there tranquility of paradise that he found to be there, but instead he found a malnourished, uh, miserable native population ruled over by uh, a priest on a neighboring island and a storekeeper on that island who, and between the two of them, they had managed to shift the uh, diet of the people from natural products that grew in the jungle were healthy and helpful, which are now sold in health food stores, to white flour, sugar. So these people were, when he arrived there, there was no paradise that people were really doing. And uh, so he became angry and he chased the shopkeeper away and he rallied the village people and uh, had to throw the white flour in the ocean. And the Philippines being 3,000 islands like it is, took time for word to get back to the constabulary and find the that this was going on. And they sent the police out. And when they got there, the natives uh, were worshipping him practically for the good that he had done, like a Tarzan movie. And he, uh, was arrested, but his charge, the charge against him was very curious. He was arrested for impersonating Jesus Christ because he looked like all the pictures of Jesus Christ that the priests had up in their little uh, churches and the storekeeper and they sold to the people. <laughs> and he looked like him. So uh, finally he was released after three months in a nasty jail in the Philippines and kicked out in return. So his evolution was very interesting. Many other things happened. He found himself finally in the uh, 70s, early 70s, becoming a student of yoga under Yogi Bhajan. And uh, he then mastered quickly the most esoteric teachings of the Sikh. The Sikh, famous Sikh guru had to offer. So he then began his own group of people. And uh, he finally, still looking for paradise, moved the entire group away from the sewer of Los Angeles, where they had a restaurant called The Source that supported them, to the island of uh, Oahu in the Hawaiian Islands. And by that time, in the 70s, in the later 70s, I was living there painting. So I had a studio where I was working on an ongoing series of mine having to do with the goddess, emergence of consciousness, and the islands of Hawaii. And uh, 
he had, by this time, he had changed his name to Father Yod. He had 17 wives. He had 30 children. And altogether, the group was about 150 people. And uh, the males in the group uh, were hang glider enthusiasts, when hang gliding was first beginning. And he had never before been in the hang glider. So, there's a clip on, you know, Watley. It's very famous. It is famous in this recording, but it's very famous called uh, Makapu Point. And uh, so he put on the harness. And everywhere he went, the wives recorded his every word. Because he was a great guru, but he taught them very esoteric tantric uh, things, which elevated their consciousness. And uh, so they recorded everything that he had to say. In other words, he was no phony guru. He had something to teach and he taught it. And he was fun. He put on the hand gliding uh, harness, jumped off the cliff. At that moment, the wind stopped. Now, the wind at Macapu Point has been constant, according to the Hawaiians, forever. But at that moment, there was no wind at all. None. And he fell from Macapu Point to the roadway, which is a thousand feet below. It's a huge distance. And uh, they all of us rushed to him and photographed everything. I never forget the photograph of him laying there, fully aware, fully awake, but in a completely altered state. He looked exactly like the photographs of Ramakrishna, the Indian, great Indian saint, taken in 1852, of his uh, ecstasy that he would experience in the state of Samadhi. And so he had ordered his people to never call a doctor for any reason because he believed that this uh, Shakti energy would cure everything. And for the most part, he was right. But they were absolutely loyal to him because he had taught them loyalty about everything. And so they spirited him away before the ambulance could get there and they took him back to the temple house, put him in his giant bed in the center of the temple, and waited for him to either recover or achieve Maha Samadhi and go directly to the stars. And he had told them that if he would die, that they would see a sign in the heavens that there would be huge stars as he, shooting stars, as his body, his spirit ascended out of the body, but that the process would begin to take three days. And so the followers were to not let his body, if he appeared to be dead, to be touched. And they were to resist with everything that they're commanded to resist anyone trying to disturb this process. So that's exactly what they did. They uh, would come in and out of consciousness. And uh, all everything was reported. And uh, about a day or so later, Hawaii time being what it is, the authorities finally figured out that it's, they didn't know where the body was or where the guy was that fell off the cliff. So it took them about two days before they were to track two or three days. And uh, he was still living when they tracked him down. But the followers held the police off with bows and arrows because he had taught them archery for 24 hours until he had passed into Maha Samadhi, which time they all rushed in to the ridiculous thing. But that night, it was the greatest display of comets and meteors that were seen in Hawaii in 100 years. Mm -hmm. So they sang and danced and were totally happy. And it was, I didn't know this was going on at all. I was living in Maui. So 
So a few days later, I got a call that this all had happened. A few days after that, a truck pulled up in front of my house. And uh, cars. And out came all the wives and all the baggage. And they were all moving in with me because I was the first son. <laughs> so I finally found them, some of them quarters in a place called Paia. And some of them stayed with me for a while in my studio. And where I was painting uh, a series of um, works about Pele arising from the ashes like the phoenix arises from it. And they're still there in this very day in Faia. Mm -hmm. But they're back to eating twinkies. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go back to the North Beach period for a moment here and uh, talk.